All right. So today I want to talk about my best advice for getting more work or studying done in less time. Let me tell you a story. So this is Jimmy, the average man. Okay. Jimmy works hard sometimes, right, for his exams or his work, whichever example you want to apply to your own life, he works hard at life. For this example, I'm going to talk about exams and studying, right, and hopefully you can apply that to your own life as well. He gets distracted sometimes, you know, he makes paper airplanes, he goes on his phone, something relevant to today maybe, maybe he goes on TikTok or Messenger or whatever, WhatsApp, and gets distracted a little bit, right, naturally so, right. Sometimes he has low motivation, doesn't really want to get his work done. And he gets average grades, right? He's just kind of like, well, this is life. I, I work in this way and I don't really know what to do about it. And he just gets average grades, right? But there's another guy, right? Jimmy's classmate, right? We'll call him Chang, right? <laughs> For no reason at all. <laughs> Jimmy's classmate takes less time to get better grades. And this really frustrates Jimmy. He's like, how is Chang getting so much better than me while he's studying less? How does that work? Right? Chang, he plays sport, right? He's in the debating team, right? Is it he has so much excess time? He hangs out with friends, right? He's in the park, he's in the you know, at the parties or whatever. He has enough excess time to be able to do these things. Meanwhile, Jimmy is stuck inside the library, working hard all day, but still getting lower grades. And it's so frustrating. But do you relate to that? Do you have people in your life that get higher grades than you, but do less work? Right? It's a situation that's like, how do they do it? You look up to them and think, I I get like decent grades, but he's getting better grades than me. He doesn't do any work. Or it seems like that, right? So me too, right? I relate to that. I was Jimmy, right? Emphasis on was here, right? But then I learned the secrets because there are secrets that Chang probably isn't telling you about, right? Or the equivalent of Chang in your life, whoever that is, right? I learned many things across my time from when I was a kid to when I am right now, right? Secret here, A, B, C, D. And that's why I want to be telling you guys today and passing the message on, right? Because at school, I was kind of average or like a little bit above average, right? I went to a decent school, but it required a lot of work because I didn't know what the, the right study techniques were, the right ways to work hard, to work less and get more out of it. I didn't know how to do that, right? At uni, uni was easy to me. And I had the most fun of my entire life. I did everything at university. Everything I wanted to do, I went on, like, I joined the hiking club, I danced salsa, I did gymnastics, I played basketball. I enjoyed multiple different experiences that I had always wanted to do while having an easy time with my academics. Right? And so, while that was, like, fun and amazing, right now... I think I'm the most productive I've been in my life. Right now I get, I estimate about three hours work, right? In three hours I get more done than the average person gets done in about a week. I feel like a ninja when I get work done. I end a three hour work session and I'm like, whoa, that's crazy the amount of work I got done just there, right? It literally surprises me, right? So today, my name is Dylan Alexander and today, I want to teach you what I learned throughout that process to get me to a place where I can get insane amount of work done in just a couple of hours, right? In the 10 plus years of time that I've kind of learned what to do, I'm going to give that to you without the scars, without the 10 years of like, you know, trudging through it, getting those bad grades and that hard work for nothing, right? I want to save you all this trouble today and teach you what I've learned in just one video, just one hour. Right, instead of 10 years of that actual lifelong scar of learning, right? I'm going to teach you throughout, I'm going to teach you through our philosophy, right? And that is a philosophy that is essentially not to be the average person, not to be the sheep, not to be the NPC, as we call it, 
not to be the person that takes the average advice because if you want to be average you take average advice right the average person i've got in the corner here is divorced obese and has less than 1k in the bank right so we really don't want to be this average person we want to be above average right we want to be exceptional right and for that we need to be a thinker because most people these days don't even think about what they do the reason you're here right now watching this video is because you're thinking about what you're doing you're thinking about okay how do i work harder how do, how do i get more work done in less time you're thinking about that and so today i want to take you through that thinking process and help you be someone who is exceptional as a human being right because you'll find if you look around you not many people think about what they do it's astonishing but thanks to the fact that you're here today kudos to you you're actually wanting to improve your life right and so the advice in this video will not be conventional advice it will not be the average person's advice it will be the stuff that actually works right so that's our philosophy today not to be an npc not to be a sheep but to be a thinker so i'm going to go through 10 steps first of all i know that seems very long but i'll go through them very quickly but i wanted to leave no stone unturned with this go through everything go through it all then a q a to answer a few questions that you guys have submitted if you want to submit questions by the way it will be in the first link in the description or in the first pinned comment below as well but more information about that later on so the 10 steps of this right i'll talk about morning routines what my opinion is on that the pomodoro technique everyone raves on about that three big mistakes people make with studying and work music how does that come into it two powerful techniques you can use so i'm going to split it this way right the first four are stuff that's like debatable should you do it shouldn't you do it the next six are stuff that i really recommend tick mark for me this is like okay cross or tick depends right i'll discuss whether or not it's a cross or tick for me and i'll give you the answer when i talk about it so two powerful techniques eating the frog right what does that mean environment action plan mental health and study drugs and nootropics that i can discuss in this video as well cool let's get on with it the first thing morning routines okay i used to love morning routines i always had this idea or i would watch a lot of youtube videos about morning routines and i would have an idea to like create this magical way to get into the work that i'm doing right first i'll go for a walk and then i'll you know do some meditation then i'll do some journaling and then i'll do some you know i'll make a cup of tea or I'll make a coffee or i'll make this or i'll make that and i loved the idea of that like aesthetically pleasing you know studio ghibli vibe of like oh i'm getting up in the morning and i'm doing these things that i do every day and it's just wonderful for me and it's just great right but key key word here used to i used to love morning routines now well let me tell you about this now i believe that they are bs so let me explain that the idea of a morning routine is to get you into the mood to do the work right you do the morning routine and then you do the work right because you can't do the work straight away you got to do something before that and so the most productive thing to do is to do a morning routine right that's the idea here right but my idea or my intention here or my my kind of thing i want to put forth is that morning routines are a waste of time like why are they there why can't you just start the work straight away right because this phrase i need to get into the mood do you do you like what's the best way to get into the mood i'll discuss that in a second right because a lot of, a lot of people on the extreme end of things have this like five hour morning routine it might not be that extreme but you might have a two hour one or a one hour one or like a 30 minute one but like why waste that time in that morning routine right this is the kind of joke i make having a five hour morning routine and then getting into your work what a waste of time right screw that just do the work the best way to get into the mood of doing the work is to start doing the work right as i said in the next slide right predicting my next slide the best way to get into the mood is to start just do it just start the activity like i need to get into the mood to do maths homework right now right i need to make a cup of tea i need to go 
you know, make a coffee or make a hot chocolate or I need to like, you know, clean my room. And I'm not saying that wouldn't help. But I'm saying the best way to get into the mood is to just start doing the work. Right? If you have your math homework right in front of you right now, just do it. Just start it. And before you know it, you'll be in the flow of things and you will be in the mood because you started. Not because of the cup of tea, not because of the hot chocolate, not because your room's clean, because you started. That's the most important factor, right? So there's a bunch of things you can do in the morning, right? The sunlight routine, the morning walk, the meditation, the coffee, the tea, the breakfast, the shower, the brush teeth, get dressed, all that stuff, all the work, right? Most days I get up and the first thing I do is work. I do nothing else. Right? I don't brush my teeth. I don't shout. I know it's embarrassing to admit, but that's what I do. Right? My morning routine is very simple. What is more important to you? All this stuff or getting the work done? That's the question you have to ask yourself. If that is important to you, do it then. Fine by me. But if you want to get the work done, if the work's the more important thing to you, then get the work done first. Right? Start the work first. Right. Here's my morning routine. Step one, wake up. Step two, work. It's that simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. Right. And before I move into the next step, I'm not hating on morning routines entirely. Right. There are extremes here. People have like hours long morning routines and that is just, it it feels stupid to me. But... Okay, on the other end of the spectrum, there's no morning routine getting the work done. That's better to me uh, between the two extremes. But if you want to make a cup of tea and it takes you one minute only, and that's like something you do that just makes you feel good, then by all means do it. If it takes one minute, that's fine. But pay attention to which extreme you want to be closer to. Right, the five hour morning routine or the just getting into work. Right, pay attention to that and implement what you need to do in the day right ask yourself that question what's more important to you the work or the routine the morning routine so with that being said let's move on to the next step pomodoro so a lot of you like pomodoro a lot of influencers in the study space love pomodoro and i used to love pomodoro as well right you might recognize a the theme here. I used to love Pomodoro. I used to love morning routines. Sorry here, okay? I'm gonna, you know, trash on Pomodoro. Now I think it's BS, okay? The idea of Pomodoro is that you work for 25 minutes and you get a five minute break. It makes logical sense, right? Because you're getting more work done than you're having break time, right? It's roughly in that 25 to five ratio. And so, it seems like, oh, it's sustainable. You'll be able to work for longer periods of time and it's great because you get bricks in the middle and it's 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 awesome, it's fantastic. Not quite, right? Cal Newport is crying. Cal Newport is disappointed, right? People think about the Pomodoro technique as the conventional wisdom, but if you've read Cal Newport's books, you will know that this is completely incorrect. That stuff is wrong. That's not the best way to get work done, okay? Let's look at what Cal Newport has to say about this. Cal Newport has a book called Deep Work, right? I think I have it with me. One second. So, this book is an incredible book about getting work done. Sorry, I had to go and get it. But that is the idea that I want to show you today, right? Deep Work. Because the thing is, when you have that five-minute break, and you try to get back into work, there's this thing called attention residue, right? Where your mind is focused on what you did previously, right? So your your brain isn't operating at 100%, right? Because you're switching tasks, your mind is distracted. It's It's got a whole bunch of things filled in it that is not the work that you're doing. Scrolling through TikTok, scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through whatever. Whatever your break was, your brain is kind of focused on that and not on the stuff that you're doing. It takes a a bit of time for that to like flush out of your brain and for you to get back into the work. And by that time, the next break comes along, 
right? That's why Pomodoro doesn't really make any sense, right? Here's the thing, right? When you take that five minute break, you are distracted for the next work period of time. So this work period of time isn't your most efficient, right? When you're distracted, your brain is operating at less than 50%, right? That's a number I just I just pulled out of thin air, but that's the kind of, that's how it feels, right? Your brain doesn't operate at the 100%. And compared to what I'm about to show you, you will really, really feel that. Deep work is when you work for longer periods of time, times that are measured in hours, two hours, three hours, things like this. And then you move on to the next task. You have a break in between and then you move to the next task, right? If you need that break, right? If you're working for a long period of time, then just switch to the next task. This is so much better because there's no opportunity for your brain to be distracted and to lose focus and to lose flow, right? The Pomodoro breaks your ability to flow in your work. And flow is one of the most important things to make you feel at 100% productivity or efficiency or effectiveness, right? And with Pomodoro, you are destroying that. And the only way to really encourage that behavior or encourage that state in your brain is to do that deep work, right? There's way less distraction and your brain can operate at what you feel to be 100%, right? It's really something amazing. And if you haven't tried it before, I'd highly recommend it. It's really good. It might take some practice, but you will feel that when you get used to it, right? And in one deep work session, you get more done than the average person does in a full day. And that seems unrealistic, but genuinely, it does, it does come out that way. You'll feel it when you do it. When you try it out, you'll be like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I've not worked like this in the past. It's way better, right? And so this is how you can get more work done in less time. Deep work, right? And you can do two hours, three hours. You can even do four, right? Depending on how you feel after that kind of time. Like when you, look, your energy kind of depletes over time. And so at a certain point in time, your work efficiency will become a point where it's like, there's no point working anymore because you're like, oh, I need to like go for a walk. I need to stretch my legs. I need to like breathe some fresh air, right? You need some time to like, because your, your brain's been working for that long that maybe four hours is too long, but don't limit yourself to four hours. If you can, if your brain looks like this and it keeps going, then keep going, right? You have to ask yourself, Am, is my work I'm doing right now, is it still effective? Or has it decreased to a point where it's like not worth doing more work right now? That's the question you've got to ask yourself, right? So that's what determines how long you can work for in these deep work sessions. But it is measured in hours. So bear that in mind, not minutes, like 25 minutes, half an hour, hours. That's deep work for you. And more details about this in the environment chapter. How do you get into a deep work session? That's all I discuss in this environment chapter, okay? So that's gonna be in step number seven, okay, environment. But next, I'm gonna talk about the three big mistakes you can make while studying. This is really interesting. I, I can't wait to get into this, right? This is reading, highlighting, and summarizing, okay? You might be familiar with this because it's one of the most, or some of the most popular methods to revise there are, right? It's very, very popular, right? Let me tell you why they are trash, okay? They are proven to be the worst study techniques that you can do right? Yet they are still the most popular. And so my kind of backup for this is this book here. The studies referenced are in this book. So it's a book that looks like this, exactly the same as you can see on the screen. A bit of a boring cover, but if you can see the authors here, these are all like researchers and like scientists who like researched this exact topic to say that this stuff isn't the most effective thing to do, right? And so it's a pretty good book. You can pick it up if you want to. It's, it's not as boring as it seems like on the cover. It's actually very interesting. But this is what I've used to kind of back up my evidence here. Okay. Basically, what the book says is, without having to go through all the chapters in the book, reading, first of all. right? So reading is basically when you open up a textbook or let's say 
I open up this book, right? And I read through it and I'm like, kind of like just, just reading for reading's sake, like a textbook, right? Like reading a textbook, reading a physics textbook. Does that help you really learn it? Right? Kind of reading and kind of looking at the most important parts and just like, just seeing with your eyes, right? It feels like learning because information is going into your eyeballs and into your brain, but does it stay there? It's, it feels like learning, but it is not learning, right? That's the emphasis I want to put on here, right? Are you tested on your ability to read, right? In the physics exam, are you given a physics textbook and told to read it and tested on your proficiency of reading? No, you're not, okay? So what's the point in practicing that? So yeah, that's the answer, no. Highlighting, maybe a step above, right? Maybe you've got that physics textbook and you're like, okay, I'm going to highlight the most important parts of this, right? It seems productive. It feels productive, right? But it's not learning. Are you tested on your ability to highlight? Are you given a piece of text in the physics exam? Are you told to highlight the most important parts? Oh, highlight the formula here. Highlight the most important part here. Highlight this. You're not told to do that. You're told to answer questions. Right, we'll come to that in a bit as well. No, you're not. And summarizing, right? You might think that's a step above, right? Oh, I've got this text. I've highlighted the most important parts. And now I'm going to summarize the important parts in my own piece of paper, right? I'm going to look at the textbook and summarize what I see on a piece of paper. It feels like learning. It feels productive, but it is not learning. If you can see a pattern here, right? Are you tested on your ability to summarize? Are you given a piece of text and told to summarize that text on that physics exam? No, right? You are instead asked questions to bring things forth from your own memory, right? And none of these things do that. And it doesn't help you learn at all, right? These people get the worst grades, right? And I'll explain the alternatives to doing this in the next, so you were not tested on that. Let me just check the next time. You're wasting time doing this right? Here it is, right? What you should be doing is the two powerful techniques that I'll talk about in a few chapters time. So that's going to be in chapter five, right? And the reason it's in a few chapters time is because these chapters are the first things that I kind of don't really recommend. And these next chapters are the things that I do recommend. Okay. That's why I've separated it out like that. I know it's a bit annoying, so sorry, or have a bit of patience for that. I appreciate that. And next I'm going to talk about music. Okay. I used to listen to music when I study, right? Another familiarity here, used to. This is controversial. I feel like this is the one that's gonna be the most argued against in the comments below, perhaps, right? I believe it's not good for most tasks, right? And let me explain that, right? Music stimulates the brain, right? You can't focus on two things at once, right? And if it stimulates the brain, then you're distracted from the task that you're doing. You're either listening to the music or you're doing the task. That's what it is, right? You can't really focus on two things at once. And therefore, there's, there's a, there is a distraction to the task, right? So your brain, again, once again, operating at less than 50%, right? Because you can't exactly divide your brain to 50-50. If you're focusing on two tasks, it's more like 30-30, right? That's how it works. What about classical music? I've heard people ask me questions about, what about music without lyrics? What about music that doesn't have any, you know, distracting qualities to it, like classical music, right? It's still a distraction. It's still stimulating to the brain. And so it still works to distract you from the task that you're doing, right? Even for creative tasks, right? People often argue, okay, for creative tasks or for like, mind-numbing task or whatever whatever like excuse you want to come up with do you really need it like I, I remember when I used to work on like graphic design work when I used to do that back in the day I would listen to music right but I'd find I'd be more focused when I didn't put any earphones in I didn't listen to any music do I really need it no not really and if it is like a little bit of a difference, right? If it, even if it is like, you know, I can listen to music and it only takes away 10% of my productivity with a creative task, 
why 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 have that right do i really need it like every creative throughout history if you think about it galileo leonardo da vinci all these people did they have music in their earphones no they're the sound of silence or the sound of nature right and that's what i want to get into right now either silence or the sounds of nature when i last listened to anything while studying or working right now I listen to silence I listen to rain or white noise which is they sound pretty similar but it's more of a natural thing that your brain can filter out and ignore and the reason why you might want to listen to rain is because of the sounds that are around you to drown out other sounds right more for noise cancellation effects so if I'm in a library and it's just too many people are talking I'll put on some earphones I'll listen to the sound of rain Right, there's a website called rainymood.com, okay, rainymood.com, and that's a website that is just the sound of rain. That's all it is, right? And it's so helpful because it's a, it's a background noise that your brain doesn't even process as a thing. It doesn't stimulate anything. It just it's just, it's just a sound in your head. It's like when you smell something in a room, but when you're in the room for a long time, you don't smell it anymore because you, your brain just filters it out. We don't need to pay attention to it anymore. It's the same thing with this. Okay? But it is not the same with music. That's a distinction I want to make very clear. So, finally come to the five steps. Or step number five, the two powerful techniques. Okay? I appreciate your patience for that. Thank you for waiting. So these are the techniques. Active recall and spaced repetition. Right? Active recall, if I can explain it here is recalling something from memory without looking at any text, right? So without, so before you might have thought you were active recalling, but you had the text in front of you. Summarizing isn't active recall because you had the stuff in front of you. You should do it without looking, right? From memory. So these are things like flashcards, exam papers, past papers are my favorite way to, to revise, right? These are the best ways to revise. And on those questions that you get wrong a lot, Put them into flashcards. Make flashcards out of them, right? What's a flashcard, you're asking? Basically, it's where you have one piece of paper. Let me see if I can get a, an example here. So let's say my phone is a flashcard. Usually, it's a piece of paper, right? So you write something down on a piece of paper, and on the other side, you get the answer for it, right? So I'll say, okay, what is, you know, 2 plus 3, right? On the other side, it's 5, right? And so if I had to, like, memorize that, then I would do it in that way. Obviously, that's a very simple example. There'll be more complicated examples in your exam and your studies and things like that. But that's how you do it. That's my primary way. If you want to like know the secrets of how I would study exam papers and flashcards. Exactly how I do it. What about spaced repetition? What's that about? What does that even mean? Spaced repetition is basically when you space out your studying to be the most optimal that it can be. Right? So when you first learn it, your forgetting curve looks like this. A forgetting curve is basically the rate at which you retain information, you retain a memory, the rate at which you forget something, right? So the first time it's pretty steep. The second time it's less steep. The third time it's less steep. And the fourth time it's less steep. And by using that, we can revise at intervals that get longer each time. So in this example, it's one day here, two days here, four days here, and then eight days here, right? It kind of doubles every time, right? Depending on what kind of system you want to use, it can be like that, right? And so you space your repetition to the level at which it's most appropriate for you to learn, right? And it can get a bit complicated. So here's some things I recommend. Anki, right? Anki is a desktop software that you can download on your computer that does all that stuff for you. It does all that thinking about the space repetition algorithms all involved in there. And it's one of the most powerful softwares I've used for this purpose. And so I really recommend it. Some alternatives to use because, okay, this is available on, I think, Mac. I'm not sure about that. It's definitely available on Windows, okay, because I've got it on Windows. Uh, Android as well. These are all free, I believe. If it's on Mac, it's, I think it's definitely free, right? On Apple, for some reason, I don't know why, it is like 24 quid. It's it's crazy, I don't know why, but 
to be honest with you, that price for how powerful the software is, is worth it. Honestly, it's it's crazy how much you can do with this kind of stuff, right? But if you have a computer, just get on there, right? Other apps or websites you can use are Quizlet, Memrise. These are not nearly as powerful as Anki is, but if you want a free alternative that is like, you know, easier, more accessible, more like, I don't know, easy to use, I guess, then you can use these, right? Anki is what I recommend, but maybe it can be a little bit hard to get into, right? Because it's just like a, a little bit more complicated or a little bit less, you know, niceified or like good looking, right? So that's my recommendations there, right? So next step, eat the frog, right? What does that even mean? What are you talking about, Dylan? Eating the frog means doing the hardest thing, right? Typically, eating the frog is to do with stuff you want to do at the start of the day. So here's a quote that I get from you. I get from you. I get from Mark Twain, okay? If it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the biggest one first, right? So do the most difficult tasks, the most important tasks, the first thing in the morning, right? That's when you should order the way that you do things, right? The most important tasks first. Yeah, exactly as I said. Do the biggest, most important task first thing in the morning, right? And that's pretty much it with eating the frog, right? Environment. So here's what I wanted to talk about when it came to the deep work thing, right? So environment is a big part of that. Take a look at the screen now. What do you think about this environment? There's video games, Instagram. So a lot of this stuff is on screens, right? So it might not be your physical environment. Instagram, Clash of Clans. I don't know what people play these days, but the last time I had a game on my phone, it was Clash of Clans, all right? There might be some new apps these days that I don't really know about. There's TikTok, there's YouTube, Instagram, Netflix, there's junk food lying around, there's video games you can play. I don't know if people have consoles still, I think. Is it PS5 now? I'm not even sure. But look at this, right? Two people's rooms, right? One person's room looks like this, and the other person's room looks like this. Notice the difference here, right? There's books to read, there's running shoes, ready to go, there's a basketball, there's a microphone. So I might make this similar to what my room looks like. A camera, a microphone, my phone, right? What apps does it have on it? Audible, the calendar app, journaling, pen and paper, right? So which environment do you think is more helpful for someone that wants to be productive, that wants to do more work, right? Which is better? The answer is pretty clear, right? It's clearly this room way over this room, right? So your phone, right? Various things you can do with your phone, right? To be less distracted, look at my phone right now, right? It's off. That's the power button. It's not turning on. It's, it's turned off, right? You can turn it off. You can put on airplane mode. You can get, you can delete apps. You can block apps. You can put the phone away, right? That's, that's kind of like the level above that. Charge your phone in the kitchen. Really good hack. Really like out of the box, kind of like weird hack that people don't really do, right? One second. Sorry, I got a bit of a sniffle today, so I'm, I sound a bit ill. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Do these things and you will get less addicted to your phone and be more productive in your time in the day, right? That's your phone usage, right? And how many tabs do you have open right now? I bet when you're watching this video and you want to be productive and you want to start wanting to start studying, there's a bunch of tabs you have open in your browser that you don't really need, right? And here's a hack you can use. There's a hack on Windows at least, I don't know about Mac, but you can press F11 to go into full screen mode and that will delete all the, it won't delete, it will like hide all the tabs that you have shown above there. So I'm on full screen mode right now. Can you see the tabs on my screen? No, you can't, right? And so if you want to get work done and focus on one tab only, you can do that, F11. But what I really recommend is closing those tabs. Those tabs are distracting to you. 
why have them open? Right? I know, like, in my life, I've had tabs open for, like, days and weeks at a time, just, like, thinking about that tab, like, okay, I'm going to watch that video in a bit after I get this work done. And the fact that it's constantly there in the corner of your screen distracts you. You're looking forward to, like, going to watch that video. and You're looking forward to, like, finishing this work task to go look at, look at that. And it's constantly in the back of your mind because it's there. Just close it. Save it as a favorite on your on your window or whatever. Like save it as like a, a liked video or save it as like a, just save it in some way, put it away, write down the title and close the tab because it will distract you. It will get in the way of what you want to do in your day, right? So how many tabs do you have open? Pay attention to that. Is the tab, are the tabs that you have open relevant to what you're trying to do right now? If they're not, get rid of them. And this feeds into deep work, right? So deep work is only possible because you have less distractions in your environment, right? If your phone is constantly pinging, if, you, if your phone has constantly got notifications on it, right? That's another thing I didn't, re didn't really mention there. Notifications, right? On my phone, on every single app, there is not a single notification that comes through. Zero, right? You might not want to be so extreme, but... When I want to get work done, that's what I want. Nothing pinging on my phone. My, my phone makes no noise. No sound comes to my phone. Right? Most of the time, it's turned off. Right? And any, like, desktop notification as well. You know when you download a program or a software and you say, allow, like, you have check, check a box to it, allow desktop, notif desktop notifications. Don't check that box. Don't allow things to distract you. Like imagine right now if I was recording and like a little desktop notification popped up here like, oh, oh, you've got one message, one message, Dylan. Like how distracting would that be for you, for me? It'd be such a mess. And so to get that deep work done, you need to clean your environment of these distractions that kind of poke at you. This constant inbound of stuff coming into your life. Get rid of that. You need to get rid of these notifications. Eliminate it from your life. No sound coming from anywhere. Right. And if you need that silence, if you if you like, you know, if you're working in your room and you have like noisy neighbors or noisy family, get earphones, get headphones to like really zone into that environment where you can get that deep work done to have that silence, to have that. Like if you want to listen to the sound of rain to get that deep work done. Right. Really, really go to lengths to optimize that for you, because deep work is is the most powerful thing you can do for your productivity, right? If I had to mention two things, right? If I had to like, you know, maybe give you two things to like, to take away from this video. If you, if you learn nothing else, it's probably deep work and those two pr really powerful techniques to learn, right? Active recall and space repetition, okay? These three things, the biggest takeaways of this video, right? The rest of it is just to facilitate you being able to do that. If I'm honest with you, right? That's like the biggest takeaway from this video. So that's deep work. So, 10 steps. One second. Sorry if you could hear my dog barking downstairs. I just got rid of him. Okay. Action plan. Step number eight. Okay. The night before, you've got to plan what you want to do. Right. So if you're studying, get that exam paper out, like know what exam paper it is, right, that you're going to be doing. Right. I'm going to do, you know, that November paper of 2021. I'm going to do paper one. Right. Whatever you want to be doing, plan that the night before and do that straight away. Like we talked about before. Uh, sorry. With the eating the frog in the morning, having no morning routine, having that ready to go. Just do it right the night before. Know exactly what you're going to do and just do it as soon as you wake up. As soon as you wake up, start that paper, start a timer, just do it. If you do that every morning, you will, oh, the amount of work that you'll get done, like before anyone else is even prepared to like open their eyes in the morning, right? You've got an entire paper done. You've got that entire bit of work done in the day. It's such a powerful advantage you can have over other people. 
that do the average thing, that do the average way to get work done, right? So, step number nine, mental health. And don't switch off now, because I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, oh, he's going to talk about mental health, I'll skip this part then, right? It's so important to take care of yourself, because if your health bar is low, then your attack points aren't as high, if you want to make it a video game analogy here, right? Listen, you need to keep these in check, because if you don't, your work rate, remember I said you could be at 100%, or you could be at less than 50, right? Your mental health affects that. Even if you're doing deep work, even if you're not distracted, your mental health will affect that 100%, right? So let's say you are doing some deep work. If your mental health is low, that will drop 90, 80, 70, 60. Depending on how bad you're doing, your productivity will go way down. Your motivation, your desire to do any work in the first place will go down right? So there's basic things to check off here, right? Sleep. Eight hours a night on average, right? If you can't get that most nights because you can't sleep, whatever, just get it on average, right? At least go to sleep when you're tired in the day. That's my best advice for sleep. When you feel tired, when you feel your eyelids getting heavy, go to sleep straight away. Don't try and extend that period of time. Go to sleep when you're tired. That's all. That's my best advice when it comes to sleep. Socializing. Seeing people in the day, talking to people, having friends to like text or phone call at, at least, if not seeing them in person, right? Exercise, moving your body around in the day, whether it's sport, whether it is the gym, whether it's going for a walk, anything like that. Sunlight, seeing the sun, getting some vitamin D in your skin, things like this. Nature is such a good one for me. I love going into nature and just seeing things. And seeing good views and seeing birds and seeing sheep and seeing horses, things like that, really great. Having a sense of purpose, very important, right? For, like, if you don't like the, the thing you're studying, if you don't like the work that you're doing, then you're not going to be able to do it, right? You're not going to be able to feel like you want to do that thing. If you feel like your life is not going anywhere, then you'll feel that huge gap in motivation, between the work that you're doing right now and the work that you want to be doing, right? And finally, gratitude. Like having a sense of, you know what? My, li my, life, not my life might not be like the best it could be, like the, the richest man in the world, but I have so much to be grateful for. My life is wonderful because of this, because of that. I'm so grateful for this microphone. I'm so grateful for this water. I'm so grateful for the weather outside. It's really sunny. It's, oh, it's amazing. Right? My life is wonderful. Right? And so, if I had to pick a top three, it'd probably be sleep, exercise, and gratitude. That's my top three. The reason being, if you're sleep deprived, it really affects you. Over a long period of time, when you're sleeping like four hours a night, it really, really affects you. Right? Exercise. If you don't move around enough, that also really affects you. And gratitude. Gratitude for me is the most important one because if you don't love life, if you don't cultivate a, a sense of my life is good, my life is amazing, I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to do the things that I'm doing. If you don't have fun in life, then you won't want to do things. Right, your motivation for doing things is so low. Like imagine there's a character who loves his life. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy to wake up. Isn't it amazing today? Isn't it wonderful? Isn't, it isn't, isn't this thing I get to do so cool? Right? Imagine how motivated he is to do his work versus the guy who is like, oh, I have to wake up today. Oh, my life is so bad. Like I hate this person. I hate that person. Oh, I hate having to do this, this is the worst thing. Who do you think is more motivated to do his work? Obviously the person that's more grateful, right? And if that's the only reason you, you have to do this gratitude kind of task, then by all means just go for it, right? Like, gratitude for me has not only helped me with work, 
It's helped me with like the rest of my entire life. Right? It's such a powerful habit to have in life. And there's a myriad of ways you could do it. Right? There's the, t- the typical way of like writing down three things in your journal. Okay, I'm grateful for water, microphone, my lampshade. Right? For example, right? But there's a general attitude you can have in life. Right? We, when you walk down the street and it's sunny. Oh, isn't it so sunny? Isn't it so great? Or you can think to yourself in your brain the opposite way. There's a possibility for your brain to be like, oh, it's so sunny, I'm, I'm too hot, I'm going to get sunburned. There's, an, there's a nice way of looking at it. There's a bad way of looking at it. right? And you get to choose that. And you can observe the way that you think in your brain and how that affects your life and the way that you enjoy life. Because enjoying life leads to you being able to do more in life. More work, more productivity, more effectiveness in the work that you do. Right? So that's why I think that sleep, exercise and gratitude are probably the most important ones to pay attention to there. So. Okay, moving on. Your mental health has a massive effect on your motivation. Right? As I talked about just now with the gratitude thing and all that. Huge effect. If you're happy in life, you'll be happy to do the work that you need to do. Right? And as I mentioned quite a lot, mental health is the level zero to everything. Right? Whatever you want to get good at. If you want to get good at recording YouTube videos, you need to have good mental health first. If you want to get good at pool, get good at mental health first. If you want to get good at swimming, you need mental health first. You need to get good at basketball, mental health. Racing, mental health. Ice skating, mental health. You need to have that in check, otherwise you won't turn up to do the task in the first place. Oh, I'm too, I'm, I'm too tired. I, I don't feel like it. I, I feel I feel bad. Uh, do you see what I mean? Like I, I might make fun of it, but like seriously, it's something that you need to consider. The less motivated you are, the less likely you are to succeed. And mental health is a direct correlation to motivation. Right? You're less likely to do to, to do the thing if you're not enjoying life, right? And it seems like a wishy-washy thing to say, but if you're not enjoying life, you won't do anything in life, right? Things won't things won't fall into place. When you're happy, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not sure how to tell you something the way that I feel when this is the case, right? Right now. I am pretty happy, right? I I show gratitude to things in life. I show that kind of level of mental health that I'm like, I'm really, really content in the way that life is right now, right? My life isn't like amazing. I don't have a million pounds in the bank, a million dollars in the bank. But I wake up every morning thinking, I get to do this as a thing that I, I do to help people on YouTube, to help people in my community, to help people live life. I get to, you know, be in a place where there's like wonderful views and nature and deer and sheep and horses. I love life, right? And that helps me so much in being able to do these things, right? I take a look at my subscribe subscribe count right now, right? It's around 600, 700 right now as at the time of recording this video. I've made almost a thousand videos, right? And the reason I'm able to do that is because I love the work that I'm doing. Right? Mental health is the level zero to everything. So make sure this health bar that you have in your brain, this mental health bar, is full most of the time. Okay? You can't can't keep track of it every single moment of your time. Like, not every second of the day or not every second of the year is it going to be 100%. But make sure it's full most of the time. That's what you can do to make sure that you're most productive in life. And the last step, I'm going to talk about drugs and nootropics. Okay, This is more of an arguable one, more of a, a one that you can say, okay, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. But in my opinion, I don't like it, right? Let me tell you a story about my experience. I took a caffeine pill once, one time in my life, right? And I felt great. I was pinging off the walls. I felt great studying and I had a, an amazing workout. I was bouncing off the walls, but I couldn't sleep for three days, right? 
I was a person that never had any caffeine or coffee or energy drinks in my life. And so for three days, I couldn't sleep, right? No sleep. So the side effects were pretty bad for me, right? And with drugs and with nootropics and with kind of experimenting with chemicals that you put into your body, there's always a good side and a bad side, right? I had a quote recently about drugs. Drugs either have side effects or they don't work, right? That's like a truism about drugs. If it works, it will have a side effect that you don't intend for it, right? So always be careful about taking drugs. And I, for, for me, I definitely don't recommend it at all. 0% of me says, oh yes, go ahead, take that Adderall, take that whatever, right? Why do you need it, right? You don't need anything. Remember the, the story I told you about the creatives that we had in history. All throughout history, we had these creative people, these people who worked with their brains and their knowledge who didn't have any of this stuff. Leonardo da Vinci, Galileo, like these kind of geniuses, Isaac Newton, Nikola Tesla, right? These people didn't have any of this stuff, yet they were geniuses of their time. They accomplished so much, right? And if you want that drug, it will only boost like that last 1% of your productivity, that last 1% of your efficiency, right? So if you want, if you really, really, really don't want to listen to me and you want to take these drugs, at least get yourself to 100% productivity and efficiency before you increase it by that one measly percent, right? So that's my take on it. You don't need it. So why take it in the first place? Why risk those side effects? Why risk that kind of like, you know, not knowing what it does to your body? Like you might as well drink some like special juice as a placebo, right? Make yourself some, you know, I don't know, like a, <laughs> an orange juice and say, oh yeah, this is going to help me study, right? You might as well do that. Like, placebos will have that much effect on you, right? Placebos, which, which goes to show how little it matters. It doesn't matter at all. Not in the grand scheme of things. What matters most is doing the work, as I've said before in this, in this lecture. Doing the work. That's what matters the most. So, next thing. 10 steps, done. Okay, I told you I'd get through them quickly. Sorry if I talked fast trying to, get, trying to get through them. It's because I want to save you some time and not drag this out to be... I could have made this three hours long. Trust me, I could have talked for ages on this. But I wanted to make it as concise as possible for you to be able to get the knowledge without having to waste too much time. Or sorry, not waste time. Not having to use up too much time in learning that, right? And if you want to learn more, by the way, I will talk up more about this on my community page which is, again, first thing in the description or the first pinned comment below, okay? I will have more in-depth online courses and, like, be able to, like, coach you one-on-one -on -one and have a community page on there with, like, high-value community members and people who want to help each other out, okay? So that is something for you. If you want more from me, then go and check that out below. Now the Q&A, right? So to submit your questions, as I talked about just now, go to that community page, the first thing in the description or the pin comment below. It's free for a limited time, okay? You get to lock in that price forever, okay? So you will pay zero dollars every month for the rest of your life. You will never have to increase your price. Your price will never go up if you get it right now, okay? Because it will go up to 129 a month. So go check it now if it's free. It's a no-brainer. Join right now, okay? And you will get all these benefits, okay? Again, these are the details. And you'll get to a page like this. Click join group and you'll get in there. And bonus content as well. There you go. So as I talked about before, a lot more in-depth advice about topics just like this one. And more kind of live coaching as well. It's really, really something I'm really proud of. And honestly, I think it's a no-brainer to join at this point. It's, like it's free. Even at 129, it's a no-brainer. But free? Come on, you've got to be stupid not to join at that point. Right? So if you enjoyed this so far, if you stayed this long, then join, right? I think like you obviously like me well enough to listen to me for this long, then join this, you'll get so much more, 
No brainer. Cool. More about that later. I'll talk about the, the details of what it, what's in there very briefly in a later point. But the Q&A, some good questions here, by the way. So pay attention to these. I, I've i tried to do, doing deep work, but it feels like this big thing, so I keep putting it off and I never end up starting. I feel like I get more work done when sh- with shorter work times. Okay. I'd say this is the only... I hesitate to call it a problem, okay? It's not a problem to do with deep work. It's more about the getting into it, okay? So a trick I would use is to set a, like a 10 minute timer, right? You're not gonna follow this 10 minute timer, but you're gonna trick your brain into thinking you are, right? So you set a 10 minute timer and just go, right? What you will find is you will get into a flow state by the time that 10 minutes runs out, right? And when it runs out, just stop it and keep going, right? It will go beep, beep, beep. And you'll be like, oh, shut up, I'm trying to do some work, right? So you'll turn it off and you will keep going, right? So once you're in the flow, it's now easy to do, right? It's easy for you to go for one hour, for two hours, for three hours, right? It's easy now. That's how you make it easy. Don't think of it as a three-hour task in the start. So if you if you try to set a three-hour timer, you'd be like, oh my gosh, three hours of work? Then you, you'll find it hard to get into it. But getting into it is probably like the, the most difficult step to conceptualizing your brain. Be like, oh God, three hours, oh my goodness, right? Whereas you could say, okay, give it 10 minutes, we'll see what happens, and then you'll do three hours anyway, right? You kind of trick yourself into it, right? So that's how we do it. Set a 10 minute timer, trick yourself into doing three hours worth of work. Okay, next one. <clears throat> Would love to know your thoughts on music whilst working. Personally, when I have quite a mind numbing, boring task, I like to listen to something, mainly trance or classical music, where there isn't any, ly- any lyrics, but enough to keep me stimulated and focused. So as I said before, I don't think music is the best, right? But I would, if it helps you individually, right? If you want to sacrifice, so on that creative task, right? So just to be clear, I think it's less distracting on creative tasks because, well, to be honest with you, I don't know why, but because you're not doing something that's necessarily entirely, you know, left brain focused kind of work, it's a different side of your brain. I don't know why, but it's less distracting. It will, it will be less taking away from your focus on the task so it'll maybe make your your work 80 percent or 90 percent but for me that's not worth sacrificing if i can get the work done sooner that's better for me right with nine with mind-numbing and boring tasks i would try to outsource that in any way possible right if we're like the entrepreneurial type of person we like business and things like this then it's much better to Try to outsource these tasks because they're not worth us doing ourselves, right? So if you can hire someone to do that task for like, you know, five pound an hour, 10 pound an hour, right? Then it's much better for for someone else to do it than for you to do it, right? But if you have to do it yourself, just get it done, right? Have that moment to kind of be with yourself and be in that moment when you're doing that task and it will fly by, right? You don't need to listen to music while you're doing it. It's just, it is something to get used to, right? So it kind of progresses over time, kind of with the, how do I explain this? With the level of your ability to cope with it. So at the beginning, when you're used to listening to music when you're studying, it will seem incredibly boring for you to study without music. Your brain just needs to adjust to that level of, silence while you are working right there's a there's an adjustment period there and as i talked about with classical music and things like this it's still a distraction so i wouldn't really consider that a uh, much of an improvement it is a bit of improvement but not much of an improvement and like i used to be some that kind of person that listened to classical music as well right i listened to like you know lo-fi hip-hop beats and classical music and I, i even made a playlist on spotify that got like a whole bunch of followers, right? And I kind of left that be. But the main point here is to 
get used to silence, right? I know it's like a bitter pill to swallow, which is why I'm finding it so difficult to try and like convince you of this thing, right? But silence is the best thing. We've had it throughout history. Every person that's worked creatively or kind of worked with their brains has never had music to listen to while they're studying, right? So think about that, right? And even in mind-numbing tasks, being with the moment and having that meditative state is fine, right? Like walking is technically a, a mind-numbing task, but doing that without listening to music is a good thing because you're, you're in that environment. You have that time to just be with your own thoughts. Even being in the shower without music, right? You have that time without music to have your thoughts kind of like bring up to the surface and think about things while you're not doing anything in particular. What you're showering, right? You're not really doing something that involves your brain. So you're just, you're allowed to think about things. So that's why I think silence is so much better than any kind of music in any cast, in any task, sorry, cast. <laughs> okay, next question. How do you organize flashcards? I find them such a headache. So such a headache that I don't want to make more of them. Okay. So I did at one point have physical flashcards that I would use and I would stick notes on them at, with the dates and everything like that as to when I should be able to revise them, when I shouldn't revise them, things like this. And it got to such a point that it was so complicated that I, that I felt like this, right? So the system with flashcards, right? Let me just explain this very quickly because I didn't explain it in the, in the actual presentation is that you have a stack of flashcards, right? You have a stack here and everything you get right, you put in one pile, so correct in one pile, incorrect in another pile. Then you go through them again, incorrect once, correct in one pile, incorrect in another pile, right? You only do the ones you get incorrect again, right? So in one session, it will look like this, right? Correct, incorrect, correct, incorrect, correct, incorrect, until you get everything correct, right? And then you're done with the day, right? But the thing is, the stuff you got incorrect a lot, you need to revise them more. And the stuff you got correct on the first try, you need to revise them less because you know it already. You can even get rid of those cards, right? At a certain point, right? So this kind of algorithm, taking, keeping track of each stage of this, this thing is very difficult. And that's where Anki comes in. That's where software like Anki or Quizlet or Memrise will do the work for you because there's an algorithm that automatically computes whether you got something wrong, whether you got something right, and it will compute for you how often you revise these cards or how often between, how long of an interval between you revise each individual card, right? Because it's different for each individual card, right? So having a system like that really helps out. So I completely relate to this, what you're saying right here. And Anki is the lifesaver for that. Right? It's the best way to go about it. Cool. Next question. Can you expand on the powerful techniques and mental health? Thanks for sharing value, bro. No worries. Absolutely pleasure. So powerful techniques, those are active recall and space repetition. I think pretty much the flashcards before handled that part of it. So I'll talk about mental health. Mental health. Let me think about this for a second. I covered this pretty thoroughly when I talked about it in the actual lecture part of this video, right? But if you're suffering in life, if you're at rock bottom and you don't feel like doing anything, then how do you expect to accomplish the greats, the great tasks in life and to be great if you don't have that base level of foundational mental strength to jump off of, right? To spring your career off of, right? Mental health is the level zero and I cannot say that enough, right? It's the level zero to everything you want to do in life. Everything has to go through this, right? Any task, all things must go through this level zero before you can get to even level one, right? But eventually you wanna to get to level 100, right? you must go through this level zero. 
You have to. There's no other way. Right? And it, it just naturally makes sense for for me. Right? How am I able to get up at 5 a.m.? How am I able to record so many videos? How am I able to do these things without earning a single penny from it yet? Working for a whole year without earning a single penny. Right? It's because I love doing this. I have a joy in my heart and a, a really... A feeling of contentedness within me that allows me to do this kind of stuff right and that's what it, that's what the mental health is right that's why it's so important with that person I talked about at the start of this video that Chang character he's got his mental health in check right? he doesn't struggle with things like this and he puts those things in place those habits that allow him to have that mental health as well that good diet, the sleep, the exercise, the gratitude. Those things are important to keep their mental health. So that's about everything for mental health, really. Like that, that's why it's so important. Next question. Is the Pomodoro technique helpful at all? I feel like 25 minutes is way too short, so would love to hear your thoughts on that. And also, in case you don't like Pomodoro technique, the Pomodoro technique, what would you say is the perfect length to work on something before taking a break? So... Yes, you're correct. I don't like the Pomodoro technique. Perfect length of time. I kind of went through this a little bit, but like maybe it's measured in hours, right? That That's what I can say for sure. Hours. One, two or three is like the most popular. Four, if you're really good. And beyond that, if you feel like you're actually getting be- like good work done, like very productive, effective, efficient work done, right? Check with yourself. It's a question you ask yourself, am I actually getting good work done? Then, yeah, do more. But four tends to be the limit for most people. But don't limit yourself to that just because I said four. Do four, five, six if you can. Right? You'll have some days where you're like really sharp, really on point. For some reason, you have the energy. You found the task that you're like really good at. And you really have energy for some reason because you ate well the day before. And you're able to work for six hours. But that'll be rare. That's going to be very rare. So be careful with this, right? The thing you have to be careful about is like the level of efficiency your brain is at because it will decrease over time. It's natural. We're not like infinite energy creatures. We have limited energy. We need to do other things to replenish ourselves. Go for a walk, see sunlight, get food, drink water, right? That's what you have to be worried about in this. Could you go over some ways I can retain the information I read? This is an excellent question. Excellent question. So, with reading, it's a lot to do with filtering information, right? We have a lot of information going into our brains. What is the gold that comes out of the bottom, right? So, this is like choosing what book to read, right? The correct book, the correct chapter, the correct paragraph, right? The correct quote, right? What is most relevant to you? What is the most actionable thing that you can do? What's the most relevant thing to you? What is something that sticks in your mind, right? So what I would say for this is there's two steps. There's action and there's whatever sticks in your brain, right? Action isn't necessarily doing the thing that the thing teaches you. If that makes sense, right? If a book teaches you to do something, some habit, it's not about necessarily doing it straight away, but that's a good way to do it. If you can't do it straight away, journal about it. Think about it in general. Have it occupy, occupy some part of your brain, right? That's part of the action behind it. And whatever sticks to you, right? That's the part where you like filter it through. Like that's what filtering comes to. It's whatever sticks in your brain. Tim Ferriss has a quote, the good stuff sticks. Right. In general, in life, if you feel like you're overwhelmed by the stuff that you're reading, if you feel like you're reading like such high value content that it's like, oh, my goodness, all of this is valuable. How do I you know, implement all of this at the same time? The good stuff sticks. The most important parts of the stuff you're reading will stick with you. Right. The most important stuff to you. Not to anyone else. Right. I've got on a wall behind you guys. I wonder if I can show you. So on the wall, we'll move this camera for a second. 
I've got a whole bunch of quotes that you can see up here, right? So this is probably my favorite one right now. Okay, can you see that? There are some flowers you only see when you take details. A recent one that I that I wrote down there and one that I really like. Okay, is that cool? Good. So, if something really sticks with you, write it down, stick it on your wall. If you want to see it every day, if you want something to be reminded to you every day, do that every day. Do that. Write it down, write down quotes, things like this, and it will stick with you and it will stay with you, right? So, a few things here. Filtering it to be able to understand what sticks with you and then taking action, really, right? That's what you've got to do here to, re to retain the information that you read, okay? A bit of a quick fire way to answer that. I wish I had more time, but yeah, that's the end of the questions, right? I don't want to make this video too long, okay? Whew, but I do feel like I've rushed this a bit. So I promise you more details about the course, that online community, sorry. So this information here, more information here. These are the details, right? <clears throat> it is an exclusive community page with live calls, a high value network, one-to-one -one coaching and online courses, right? So if you join, you will get live calls with me. I'll help you directly with the stuff that you're working on right now. And I'll help you gain success in those areas. Okay. And one-to-one -one coaching as well, right? So the video in the website includes all the details if you want some more information. And there's bonus, bonus content available as well. You can see I'm getting to my the end of my wits here with this video. I've used up all my energy. So bonus content including so much more detail, so much more kind of like less rushed. If you feel like this video has been rushed a little bit, it's because I want to like jam pack as much information as I can into one YouTube video, which is very, very hard to do, right? With this, I get to relax. I get to make it 10 hours long, right? And still provide the exact things that I want, you know, to teach, right? And not feel pressured into like, you know, jamming it into one video. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your attention today. And I genuinely think if you follow these rules and some of these tips, you will find something in there that really helps you to revise better and to get more work done in less time. I believe that in, I believe in that for you and I hope all the best, best wishes in your exams or work that you're doing. I'm gonna end with something that we say every single time, knowledge is power and the power is yours. Thanks for watching, take care, peace. Lovely.